CBS. Sanford Stadium on the campus of the University of Georgia two hours ago. The dogs parade through a sea of red on the dog walk. It's a Saturday in the South, and that means football. Welcome to the dog house. Georgia Bulldogs 2-0 for this season. South Carolina Gamecocks 2-0 as well. And a recently expanded stadium at Sanford Stadium now holds 92,000 fans. And first on the field, the Bulldogs of Georgia. Second home game of the season for the Georgia Bulldogs. They defeated Middle Tennessee State here one week ago. Their head coach is Mark Richt. He's in his third season as the head coach of the Bulldogs. And right behind them, the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Likewise, 2-0, and, and their head coach, Lou Holtz. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. Welcome to Athens, Georgia. What a season for Georgia a year ago. 13 wins, an SEC championship, and victorious in the Sugar Bowl. They look forward to basking in adulation in the offseason. Instead, it turned into a time of tumult. Nine players on this squad attempted to sell their championship rings on the Internet. Not illegal, but certainly potentially disruptive. And other eight players suspended for differing numbers of games for a variety of indiscretions. They are now, with one exception, all back. And so we are ready to see them play. And Todd, they come in uh, facing a pretty good team. Yeah, Mark Richt has said this team has handled the off-field adversity very well to this point. They've played hard in two games, but they haven't really been tested. They will be tested today by a very physical and well-coached South Carolina team. Now let's talk about the two quarterbacks, one of whom very familiar, David Green of Georgia. The other, Dondro Pinkins, his first year as a starter for South Carolina. Yeah. David Green is clearly the leader of this Georgia football team. His third year as a starter, and I think he is playing better than I've ever seen him play. He's in a tremendous rhythm right now, completing over 70% of his passes. And for South Carolina to have a chance in the game today, they must find a way to disrupt that rhythm. They've got to get to him. Now, they've had success doing that the last two years. In fact, Georgia has not scored an offensive touchdown against South Carolina's defense in the last two years. They must disrupt him today. The other thing South Carolina has to have is a solid game from their quarterback, Dondrell Pinkins. Now, he is a big, physical guy, 250 pounds. He's got a big leg arm. He's not maybe as good of a runner as Corey Jenkins was last year, but a very capable runner. But the thing for Dondrell, he's got to make good decisions with the football. He cannot put his defense in bad situations on the road against the defending Southeastern Conference champion. And let's introduce you to the third member of our team. Here's Jill Arrington. Jill? Well, thanks, Vern. South Carolina has 15 players that are Georgia natives. So this game is very important to them, including eight starters. Their quarterback, Dondrell Pinkins. Their two cornerbacks, Teddy Crawford and Dante Robinson. And he'll, ironically, be going up against his best friend, former teammate Damian Gary. Both went to Central High School just 10 minutes away in Athens. So it's going to be a big battle in the backfield. It'll be interesting today. Back to you guys. All right, Jill, thank you. It is a gorgeous early September Saturday afternoon in the south. Temperature of 84 degrees, humidity of 46 percent, slight winds, and a forecast for sunny sky. South Carolina won the toss, and they have deferred to the second half, so we'll kick off. Last year, we had a 52-minute rain delay, lightning and heavy rains in Columbia. Carolina won the we lost that game 13 to 9. Joey Bowers with the kick. Kim Jennings, one of two men back. This is DeCorey Bryant, number 22. And he does not get back to the 20-yard line. He's down near the 15. David Green, the junior, having a, a typically magnificent start to this season. 470 yards, one touchdown. He does not turn the ball over. And he makes great decisions with the ball. And, and I mentioned, he is in a real rhythm right now. Watching him on film, I mean, he gets that ball in his hand, and when he hits his last step, he is getting rid of the football, and he is throwing with great accuracy. Spread formation on first down and 10. 
His new center is Russ Tanner, number 50. Here's Green, not much pressure, flips it out. Caught out of the backfield by Michael Cooper, number five, who is getting his first start ever today. Now let's check this revamped Georgia offensive line. This is an area where they lost five starters. And up front, it's Inman, Brock, Tanner, Miller, and Max Gene Gillis, son of Haitian immigrants. In the backfield, Cooper, redshirt freshman Jeremy Thomas is the fullback. And you saw the wideouts as well. There are four wideouts here, and Green with a change at the line of scrimmage. You mentioned that new offensive lineman, Inman, the left half, the only guy who did not play a lot last year. Green, deep right side, incomplete. Intended for Michael Johnson, number 25. It'll be third down. Defensively for South Carolina, this is an aggressive, good bunch, and they have changed from a 3-5-3 a year ago to a 4-3. We'll develop that. Thompson had a sensational game last week. Linebackers Garrison Lawrence and Ricardo Hurley gets the start today. For an injured Lance Lowry, Robinson Wilson, Jackson, and Crawford in the secondary. Third down. Here's Green. Comes to his left. It's caught by Reggie Brown. That's going to be a first down. Number one for a first. Well, the big problem for South Carolina, they've been very good on third down now so far. Only 7 of 31 conversion, but they weren't set here. Watch these guys in here moving around. And David Green starts to play, and they're still trying to get in position as a defense. Again, you mentioned a new scheme, a 4-3 defense. They've been good on third down, but that time they got caught with the quick count. Again, out of the spread. South Carolina will bring only four. Green comes to the near side, caught by Brown, but he was out of bounds. It's an incomplete catch. Teddy Crawford defending. Mark Richt recently signed a contract extension with a hefty pay raise. He's up in stratospheric heights now with a with a pretty solid buyout yeah. at the end of it. And he was all in favor of the buyout. I mean, he loves it here. His family loves it here. He doesn't have any intention of leaving the University of Georgia, and so he was very comfortable with that kind of a buyout clause. Described this place to us yesterday as awesome. Here's a draw play, big hole. Michael Cooper spins, looks for a block, and heads right. Being chased from behind, Dante Robinson got him, but Michael Cooper ripped off a big one. When you run out of the eye formation, your fullback has to lead up in there. Watch Jeremy Thomas lead on the inside backer. Number 41, he's a walk-on. That's the key block right there. Number 41 seals it and allows Cooper to get into the secondary. You cannot run out of the eye formation if you don't have a good blocking fullback. Jeremy Thomas did it right there. Well, if form holds, he'll score on his second carry. He's done it twice in the first two games, once each. In the first game, a 37-yard run was called back because of holding. Michael Cooper. Tony Milton is not dressed up today, and here's a flag. I think South Carolina was trying to call a timeout. One of their linebackers raised up to call timeout. Whether they got it called or not, we'll have to see. The play clock was also running down close to zero. But right now, we're seeing a little confusion on the South Carolina side of the ball. Disregard the flag. There was a timeout by South Carolina called part of that. Well, a 46-yard run, his first carry in his first start. Michael Cooper, the highlight thus far. Well, a lot of confusion right now for South Carolina. That's the nose tackle, Daryl Shropshire, who's going to call the timeout. And he stands up from his nose tackle position and, and makes the call for the timeout. And again, we've seen a couple instances now where Georgia has fooled South Carolina with their formations. On first down, the handoff. Up the middle it goes. And that is Ronnie Powell, number 20. His first carry, a gain of seven, and the flag is down. Lou Holtz, fifth year head coach at South Carolina. 32nd season overall, and he has now passed one of his heroes, Woody Hayes, in numbers of victory. He broke a tie with Woody, who had a 238, and is now 240, 120, and 7. Right now, Georgia is creating some confusion with their formations and also with their quick huddles. 
They're lining up real close to the line of scrimmage. They're getting out of the huddle quickly, getting to the line of scrimmage and snapping the football. The last two years, Charlie Strong was the defensive coordinator, and South Carolina ran a very unorthodox 3-5-3 defense. We'll see that from the Florida Gators now. But this defense, this 4-3, is very similar to Georgia's own defense. And so far, it looks like they recognize it much better. Up the middle, Cooper stuffed. And let's go back to New York and check in with Tim Brando. All right, Vern, North Carolina State. How about Phillip Rivers, tutored by Norm Chow, the offensive coordinator at USC, steps up, finds T.J. Williams. They get the extra point. They could be, and they are, headed for overtime at the old horseshoe. My, oh, my. He's a, he's a great player. You know, Norm Chow had the Heisman Trophy winner last year in Carson Palmer, and as Timmy mentioned, tutored Phillip Rivers as well. Up the middle, they go again, and Cooper manages to achieve the six-yard line, but that'll set up a third and goal. This offensive drought goes back almost three full games against South Carolina, now running up to 178 minutes since they last scored a touchdown. And this year, their problems have been complicated in the red zone as well. This is now their 10th entrance into the red zone, but only four touchdowns. So a, a critical third down play here after a good drive. Third and goal at the five. That is Reggie Brown in motion. Flag is down. Green's got it out in the receiver. The touchdown is good to Brown, but I think this one's coming back. The indication might be that he turned up field a little too soon, an illegal motion, and that's exactly what it was. Now, this team last week, the University of Georgia, 18 penalties for 129 yards, 13 of them in the first half. And that that hurts your uh, that hurts your red zone field activity. Illegal formation, you have a lot of only six men on the line against the offense. Five yards, repeat third down. The key to that call was they only had six guys on the line of scrimmage. So it wasn't that Reggie Brown turned up field. I think the right tackle might have been off the line of scrimmage. Max Gene Gillen. Well, Jay Vines is our referee. Take a look at Gene Gillis right here. I don't think he's all the way on the line of scrimmage. Third down, just outside the 10. Blitz. Green, good blitz pickup. He dances out to his left. Nobody open, and Green will tuck it and set up a field goal attempt at the five. So the touchdown drought continues for Georgia. Yeah, and a good call, I think, by defensive coordinator Chris Posh to blitz David Green in that situation. Now, if D.J. Shockley was in the game at that point, maybe you don't blitz him because he might hurt you with the quarterback run. But once David Green had to leave the pocket, his effectiveness goes way down. And that was a good call at the right time for that blitz. Now, Billy Bennett, 6 of 7 for the year. Over the course of his career, he's hitting 78% of his field goals, and this one is good. He knocks it home to go 7 of 8 in 2003. But I'm sure there's a little frustration on the Georgia sideline. Your number one pick in late night. Okay, Bennett. Billy Bennett authors a field goal, 3-0 Georgia, takes an early lead over South Carolina. And Billy Bennett kicking off for the first time in his career. Brett Kerouac had that responsibility a year ago. And David Green and Mark Rick talking about what might have been. Yeah, again, red zone productivity is something that no offensive-minded coach is going to let slide. And again, that was their 10th entrance into the red zone, but they've only scored four touchdowns so far early in this 2003 season. And another uh, failed attempt there. Billy Bennett, not the strongest kickoff leg in the country. He's more of a directional kicker. And he'll kick this one to the near side where it will be kicking by Matthew Thomas at the nine. Thomas spilled near the 30-yard line. Good return for South Carolina. Right up the field and put Dondrell Pinkins in some good field position. And when you look at Dondrell's numbers, uh, they're not all that good. 43% completion, but I'm going to put a number right here. 17. That's the number of drop passes that South Carolina has had in the first two ball games. And so the numbers don't tell the whole story. And South Carolina must do a better job of catching the football today. 
Dondrell Pinkins, a native Georgian, started the last two games of last year. So this is his fifth career start. Dacus Terman, one of the setbacks out of the spread. It's Terman. And Terman had his first career 100-yard game a week ago. He runs right into Ray Gant, number 51. Let's check the Earthlink starting lineups now. Offensively for the Gamecocks of South Carolina, the line. Horton is the most experienced. He's going to get David Pollock for much of the day. And Sean Goddard at right tackle. Backs and receivers, Terman. Chavez Donnings eligible for the first time today. Thomas Taki Muhammad also in the starting line. It's second down. Here's a quick flip out to the right side. That is Taki Muhammad. And he is driven down at the 35-yard line. Thomas Davis, number 10, one of the leaders of this Georgia defense. Anchored up front by the All-American David Pollock with 14 sacks a year ago. Golston, Gethers, and Gant join him. All new linebacker crew. First time since 1979. Three new linebackers. And the secondary hampered by injuries. They're at full strength today with the exception of Kentrell Curry, who is still out with an injury. Third down. Quarterback draw, Pinkins has the first plus. Good call. Good call by Skip Holtz for a couple reasons. They spread them out. They need to get that first third down conversion. And Dondrell Pinkins is 250 pounds. You've got extra defensive backs in there. I mean, this is a defensive back. And watch when Dondrell Pinkins takes off with the football. I mean, he is a guy. He's a big physical quarterback who's going to run through some tackles. Good blocking at the point of attack. And even though Davis is a good player, that's a mismatch physically in favor of Dondrell Pinkins. First and 10, South Carolina. Terman gets the handoff and goes left. Slips the first tackle from Tony Taylor. Ray Gant gets him. Actually, it was Odell Thurman, the middle linebacker. We got a Terman <laughs> and a Thurman. Well, the one thing about this Georgia defense, I mean, if you have to pick just one word to describe them, it's fast. And I think this defense this year will be even faster than the defense was last year. And the more these younger guys that are playing get comfortable playing to where they can play fast all the time and not be thinking about what they're doing, they're going to be really something to watch. But it's a very fast defensive football team. Second down nine. Again, time to throw, and it's dropped. That's Troy Williamson. Let's check in once again with Tim Brando. History made by Louisiana Tech today, Vern. Luke McCown with an 11-yard strike to D.J. Curry. And the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech beat Michigan State in East Lansing. Doesn't hurt to play a tough schedule, does it, fellas? A loss at home to Miami to open may have helped Louisiana Tech today. Oh, my goodness. You know, I saw Luke McCown at uh, Peyton Manning's quarterback camp this summer. Dondrell Pinkins and David Green and I, we were all down there together. And Luke McCown can flat out play now. That's a good win for him. Third and nine. Four-man front for Georgia. They look like they're blitzing. They are coming. Bring six. Pinkins gets rid of it. Got a man open. Williamson, first down, South Carolina. Across the 50. The ball comes to rest at the 45. A gain of 12. This is a good job of picking up the most dangerous blitzes and then a good job by Pinkins staying in there, knowing he's going to get hit, keeping his focus downfield and making the solid throw to Williamson. Also a nice thing, you know, Williamson dropped the play previous. He comes right back to him on third down and they get the conversion. And a second consecutive first down in this drive, a 3-0 ball game. Fake. Taki Muhammad comes right, gets a terrific block. Out on the edge, and Thomas Davis makes the tackle. But that was Chavez Donnings, number 83, who was not able to play the first two games. There was a question about uh, a tutorial that he had received. And, uh, it was solved to the satisfaction of the NCAA, so he is playing his first game of the season today. Actually, his first game since this Georgia That's game right. a year ago. Yeah, he was injured in this game, took a medical red shirt, also fumbled a punt in this game last year, so probably has a lot of special meaning for him to be back on the field right now. Second down and five, quarterback draw. Again, good block by Terman, and Pinkins leans forward and assures himself a first down. See, last year when Corey Jenkins was the quarterback for South Carolina, it was almost like having an extra running back. 
and he was not a great thrower. In fact, he was not really even a better than average thrower. But this guy is a good thrower and also a good runner. Not the same kind of runner that Corey Jenkins was, but a very adequate runner. And uh, that was a designed quarterback draw with Terman being the lead blocker, and they get another first down. Terman, the only setback still. Three wideouts. Williamson to the right side. Now adjustments by Georgia defensively. Fake toss and almost pulled down. Incomplete pass. Well, this was kind of an ugly looking play for South Carolina. First of all, the tempo of the play. Not everybody moved at the same time. There was penetration by Georgia. The quick throw wasn't there and Pinkins just threw it away. And you see a little bit of the strength of Pinkins that time getting rid of the, of the football with somebody hanging on. De Fiore, who's listed in your programs and in your hearts is Preston Pennell. <laughs> you know, <laughs> second down and 10. How many times it's dropped again. That's two drops in the game and 19 in two games and a quarter. I think that ball was tipped by our guy, David Pollock, though. Now, David Pollock is a guy who you see him hit the arm of Dondrell Pinkins and cause that ball to flutter out of there. This guy plays the game the way it's meant to be played. And, and the two things I think that set him apart is he has a motor that never stops. He never takes a playoff, and he has great football instincts. And he's always around the ball, and he's always making plays. Third and ten. Right side, man open! Caught Muhammad! First down at the 11. Taki Muhammad, a former defensive back. Flag is down. Holding. Bring it back. Ouch. They were holding on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. Well, watch David Pollock right here. He's going to come inside. And I don't know if this is where the hold is or not, but they're going to double team him. He comes inside of Goddard, and there's the hold by Goddard. Number 70, the right tackle, when he was beat to the inside, reached out and grabbed David Pollock. And again, he doesn't have any sacks yet this year, but he always shows up, and he always is around the football. Third and 20. Pressure from the corner. Thomas Davis got there and knocked the ball. A flag on the far side. Thomas Davis, who as a high schooler played against Dondrell Pinkins three times. Offensive illegal motion. Well, we've seen both offenses put together a decent drive only to, to find themselves uh, going backwards at the end. It's the offense. Only six players on the line of scrimmage. It's declined be fourth down. Fourth and 20. This is an area throughout the game that I think South Carolina has to be very, very sound in, is their punt protection. Georgia blocked five punts last year, and they've got some excellent guys. Now, this is a safe punt for Georgia. They're not going to go after this one, but throughout this game, something to watch with South Carolina. Josh Brown is the new punter, replacing Tyler Dean. Damian Gary, the veteran, is back and makes the grab. At the 13-yard line, Damian Gary's next punt return will tie him for number one atop the all-time career punt return leaders. Six twenty-five to go opening quarter. Georgia on top, 3-0. And they've got the ball for the second time after the punt by the South Carolina Gamecocks. High formation. Play fake. Green. Goes deep, overthrows Reggie Brown. Tough pass. Great pass. Can't get enough college football news? Then check out Dennis Dodd's column and find out what's really going on from the insider's view of college football at CBSSportsLine.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS SportsLine. 
The first series that Georgia had the ball, a lot of spread formation. Now two plays in a row, standard eye formation. A little more of a run-oriented formation, and South Carolina up for the task. Michael Cooper, nothing there. We mentioned the fact that Tony Milton, who started the season as the starter, unable to go. He's got a calcium deposit in his left knee, the result of a, of a fracture from some time back. So Milton not even in uniform today. He's the guy that came on last year as a red shirt and uh, replaced Musa Smith at times, particularly in the Kentucky game. Loss of one. It's third and 11. Play fake. Green. Pressure from the backside. Got Greg Gibson. And that's a first down. A big pickup to the 32-yard line. 19 yards. Well, there was some question whether Fred was going to play because he slightly pulled his hamstring on a kickoff return late in the Middle Tennessee game, and he's up hobbling after this play. It's a corner route, well thrown timing-wise by David Green, and you could see Fred just kind of crumpled at the end of that play. And he, uh, and this is the thing that Mark Rick was so worried about. I mean, he, he didn't know whether to play him or not. They tested him Thursday morning. He tested out 95% full strength. He had not practiced up to that. They tested him Thursday. He practiced Thursday afternoon. This was the game last week. And you can't see the clock, but there's under two minutes left in the game. And Fred Gibson's still in the ball game. And right as he plants his foot and breaks out to the right, you can see he pulls up lane with the left hamstring. Anyway, Mark Rick said, I don't know whether I should play him or not. He wants to play. He wants to be out there. But I don't want this to turn into a six or seven week problem rather than if we let him sit out this week, maybe he's he's 100% next week. Mark Rick right now has got to be sick. Yeah, questioning himself. 19-yard gain, but Gibson might be gone for the game. And perhaps won't. First down and 10. Here's Cooper. Looks for a block. Nifty little shoulder move. And that's a first down. We go back once again to check in the 10 of New York. All right, Vern, Todd will appreciate what Fred Prinzel has become. And this really started in the national title game last year. The ability to maneuver and make a play. Here to tight end Ben Hartsock. In overtime, they have the lead. Moments later, from 10 yards out, Phillip Rivers to Tremaine Hall. They tie the game at 31. NC State has the ball as overtime continues. All right, Tim, thank you. Here's Green, fakes the toss, goes across the middle. It's caught by the tight end, Robert Brannon, number 84. When I talked about the rhythm of David Green, that plays a perfect example. He makes the play fake, and then as soon as he gets out of that fake and plants his foot, boom, the ball is out of his hand. Watch David Green come out of the play fake. The tight end is going to run right through the middle, but watch David Green. Play fake, set his feet, ball's gone. It's hard for a defense to react. That play action holds the linebackers, makes the throw. Freshman Craig Lumpkin making his first appearance in the backfield now. Highly touted running back from Lithonia, Georgia. Hamstring problems prevented him from playing in the first two games. Gets a pretty good block in his first play. The pass for Gary is incomplete. I like the block of Lumpkin. Yeah, he stuck his nose right in there. And, uh, you know, he hurt his hamstring the first day of full contact, of full pads, on the first play of inside drill. And he hasn't been back until this week. Now, when I was at Penn State, we used to call Tuesday Bloody Tuesday. That was the hardest day of the week. And this Tuesday, they gave him almost all the reps and all the hard physical stuff to see if he was ready. And he passed the test, and he's in there right now. Second down and 10. There's Green with the change. South Carolina runs four. A pass complete. That's No, it's incomplete. Trapped. Michael Johnson, number 25, who's lost his starting spot. The hero of last week's win over Georgia, or Auburn, rather. Johnson started the first two, and then Reggie Brown came on last week and caught seven balls. Yeah. Michael Johnson, a catch for the ages on fourth down and 19 in Auburn last year. The game that secured the SEC championship for this Georgia team. Third and 10. Reggie Brown. 
You mentioned Reggie's seven catches last week, and Mark Rick is so happy for this kid. He's finally starting to blossom into the kind of player that everybody expected him to be when he came out of college, or out of high school, out of Carrollton High School. Highly touted, had an injury in 2001, played a little bit last year, but he has had a great camp and is off to an excellent start this season. Mary O'Reilly, number 80, making an appearance on the field on first down, just inside the 20. Here's Green, fires it out, little swing pass, really. Rayleigh out of bounds, down the sidelines. That's a first and goal at the six. He was one of the kids who served a two-game suspension back for the first time today. And again, the timing and the rhythm of David Green's throw. Watch Rayleigh. This is a hard throw. It's not a deep throw, but you've got to throw that thing right out in front of him so he can catch it and not lose speed. A perfect throw by David Green and Rayleigh right into the football game. Still looking for their first touchdown since Brett Milliken scored for Georgia in 2000. Here's Lumpkin. Plunges up the middle near the three. Well, what do you think about how they've attacked this 4-3 defense so far? Well, I think they're doing a much better job. And see, the, the difference is this defense, this 4-3, is very similar to what they see from their own defense. So all summer, all spring, they're used to going against an aggressive attacking 4-3 defense. Now, and so their recognition is much better. Plus, when you try to get a scout team to learn this defense, all your scout team defensive players are used to playing this defense. So they give you a better look during the week. That 3-5-3 was a very unorthodox defense. Second and goal, green, fade pattern, Reggie Brown, adjustment, got it. Touchdown, Georgia. The drought against South Carolina comes to an end. Two guys that are pretty similar in stature. Reggie Brown at 6'1", Dante Robinson at 6 foot. One difference, Reggie Brown has a 43-inch vertical leap. Throw that ball up, let him go up in the air and make the catch. Billy Bennett just knocks home his 94th consecutive PAT. Well, Jill talked about the numbers of players from both states. David Green contended against Dante Robinson in high school. He beat him on this play. Three oh five to go first quarter, Georgia hug of the sixth. Uh, it's talking to you, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'd recognize that bark anywhere. <laughs> Eighty six yards, eleven on the play. Bennett to kick off for the second time. Williamson and Matthew Thomas are the deep men for South Carolina. Come to the near side again, nice and high. This one, though, fairly short, taken at the 13 by Matthew Thomas. Out to the 30 and down. And let's go down to Jill Arrington for an update on injuries. Jill? Well, Vern, unfortunately for Georgia, Fred Gibson did re-injure that hamstring. They're icing it down now, and he is doubtful to return. He felt it pull when he went for that ball. But Ben Watson, he is getting his ankle retaped. He injured that ankle in the Clemson game. He's re-injured it, but they're retaping it because they really want him on the field. But the other guys sure did step up. Reggie Brown and those guys really pulling through for the other ones injured. All right, Jill, and right behind Ben Watson, you saw Will Thompson. He's a defensive end who is out for the year with a dislocated ankle. First down and 10. Williamson gets the ball. And a sweep to the left side. Good resistance defensively. Sean Jones is among the gathering who uh, congregates at him. Doubleheader on the NFL tomorrow. It is a busy day for those of us at CBS. First game, Pittsburgh at Kansas City. Miami at the Jets. And many of you have seen New England, Philadelphia. Denver, San Diego, or Cincinnati at Oakland in the second game. Jim Nance, Dan Marino. My goodness, new promo here. Deion Sanders. Boomer Esiason. Second down and eight. Thinkins hands it off. Demetrius Summers, highly regarded freshman who uh, carried the first time South Carolina had the ball this year and picked up 10 yards in the opening game over Louisiana Lafayette. 
Yeah, the, the key for him is how quickly he develops when the ball's not in his hand. You know, I mean, he's a great runner, has great vision, and when he has the football, he knows what to do. The key is, does he know what to do consistently when he doesn't have the football? Who to block and how to block him? We'll find out on this third down play right now. And Pollock is lined up to the left side. David Pollock is covering Summers. This pass over the head of Chavez Donnings. It'll be fourth down. Tim Jennings defending. Jennings, another of those who served a two-game suspension and is playing for the first time today. I think he's a real difference maker for this defense, too. I mean, he's a little guy. He plays with a, a lot of motivation, a lot of energy. He's from South Carolina, so this game very special to him. And uh, this was a good game for Georgia to get him back because he's a key part of a lot of the things they do defensively. It's going to be Joey Bowers to punt this time. It's a fake. Oh, boy. What a call. Call Bob Stoops. Joey Bowers flies down the sidelines. What a great call. Bowers is the backup punter. And a kickoff man. There is a flag down. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on South Carolina. It'll probably be after the play. Dead ball foul, I'm sure. But it's going to affect their field position. That's why Lou Holtz is so upset. What's sportsman like against the offense is 15 yards from the end of the run. We do have a first down. What a great call. Now, this is a rush look by Georgia. New punter in the game. It is a run all the way. And watch the convoy. I mean, there's no fake kick. It snapped the ball and sealed that outside with three blockers in front. And, I mean, Georgia still doesn't know it's a fake punt. They're yelling on the sidelines, but it was 20 yards downfield before they even recognized the fake had been called. Now, such a big part of calling a fake punt is calling it when nobody expects it. And that was a time when Georgia was not expecting it. Now, we talked about Bob Stoops, of course, Oklahoma. The fake punt in their win over Alabama last week. It was a handoff left side to Kenny Irons, number 22. And another flag is down. You see, the only problem is the unsportsmanlike, and we don't know exactly what it was, but it really affects their field position because they were in scoring territory. Now they go back 15, and now they get another penalty on the first offensive play. So the penalties right now really hurting Lou Holtz's team. And that's a holding call when it flies in from that far away. Holding against the offense. 10 yards from the spot of the penalty. Repeat, first down. Well, we have confirmed from the sideline that the unsportsmanlike call on the fake punt, the run by Bowers, was called on number 16, Jamesha Jackson. Mm. Yeah, he's going to hear about it from Lou Holtz right now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe for the rest of the quarter. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and into halftime. Because that, uh, boy, that just took away such a momentum play. And now 25 yards later in penalties. From the 40, first and 15. Here's Pinkins. Pollock comes at him just about got there. And the pressure allows the interception to be made by Sean Jones, number six. But give a lot of credit to David Pollock, who's into a jawing match now with one of the offensive linemen. He just has a motor that never slows down and great football instincts. Here he is here. He's relentless. He's working against Goddard. He gets by him and just the heat, the pressure. There was some pressure inside also. And it just forced a little bit of a rush throw by Pinkins, an underthrow, and Sean Jones with the big interception. And another flag down. Personal foul. Dead ball. Personal foul. Late hit against the defense. It's 15 yards from the end of the run. It'll be first down, Georgia. Seeing a little bit of too much of the officials right now. Yep. I mean, we can clean this thing up on both sides. Big interception by Sean Jones. Brian Van Gorder told us Sean Jones has been playing the first two games the best of anybody on their defense. Came to Georgia a couple years ago as a highly regarded quarterback. Unfortunately, the same recruiting class as David Green and uh, has switched to safety and has been very, very productive. That is 
is only the second interception of the season for the Bulldogs. Here's Green forced out to his left. Pass is complete to Damian Gary. 11-yard pickup by number 18. You don't always have to be a great scrambler to be effective moving in the pocket. That time, South Carolina got good pressure by Mo Thompson and David Green. All he had to do was just step to the outside a few feet and allow that rush to come inside and, and buy some time to throw it, and that's exactly what happened. He had a first down 10 on the Gary catch. He's 8 of 13 for 94 yards. Typically efficient. Ball play. Cooper. For the 41 yard line. Well, South Carolina, over the last five years, it's the old cliche in football, but cliches are born out of truth. Yeah. If you win the turnover battle, you win football games. Yeah, there are so many statistics that don't really mean anything, but that statistic does mean a lot. The turnover ratio is very, very significant. That's the end of the first with our score 10-0. We will return to Sanford Stadium after this message. And this word from your local station. All-American David Pollock has helped entertain this crowd of near 90,000. We begin quarter number two from Sanford Stadium. David Green, David Pollock's best friend and roommate, as of this year, backs off and changes the play. Comes right side, caught by Michael Johnson out of the backfield, and a good play on second down and nine for the Georgia Bulldogs as we get underway here in the second quarter. Well, Todd, we talked a lot about this decision by uh, South Carolina to change to the 4 3. It right. appears that it has not hampered Georgia at all. No, and I think it's, you know, it's been a situation where in the long run, I think it'll be a good decision for South Carolina. But today, it's helping Georgia because that 3 5 3 they faced the last two years was so different that you're just not used to seeing it, and they had a lot of recognition problems. But this defense, so similar to what they see in their own defense, David Green doing a nice job of spreading the football around. Third and four, there's the first sack of the day. George Guy's got it, number 99. And that is the first down, first time that uh, Carolina has forced a punt. Ninety-two thousand on hand. Fourth and ten now. A ten-nothing score. Billy Bennett with a field goal on the opening drive of the game, and then an 86-yard march. Georgia going through the Gamecock defense and getting a touchdown catch from Reggie Brown. Time called. Gordon Neely Kelso is the new punter this season for the Georgia Bulldogs, replacing Jonathan Kilgo, the four year punter, graduated a year ago. And he is on on fourth down and 10. And Demetrius Summers, the freshman running back, is back to return the punt. Nice high deep. Neely Kelso, fair catch caught over the shoulder by Demetrius Summers. Now that was really a big stop by the South Carolina defense. Even though they don't have great field position right now, this is not an offense built to make a big comeback. Our coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. Thanks for making Live Fox. South Carolina with the ball. They trailed 10 nothing before a sellout crowd at Sanford Stadium. And time now for our Affleck. trivia question of the week. But we're going to hold it for one play. Hand off. Take his term. Now then, you want to do it again? No. Oh, come on. All right. Time now for our half line. <laughs> the echo in here. <laughs> it's the Mormon Tabernacle Ducks. <laughs> oh, South Carolina has played Georgia 55 times. Which two teams have they played more? 
to put a grammatical twist on it. Mm. Second and four at the 21. It's a big first down run that time by Terman. Gives him some better field position. Two tight ends set for South Carolina now. Power football. That's a first down. Dacus Terman. Last week in a game against Virginia, it was a 10-7 ball game late into the game, and because of so many drop passes, at a certain point, Skip Holt said, you know what, we, we can't do this anymore. we got to go to two tight ends and just run the football, and that's when they got their most productivity from their offense. And right now, trailing in this game 10 to nothing. Had a few drops and a few missed throws by Pinkins. They're going to a more run-oriented formation now with two tight ends in the ball game. And Terman continues as the only running back. And off. Yeah, it sure was. Boy, they went right into the strength of the Georgia defense. Well, and something was messed up with the snap count. They didn't all take off at the same time. The ball was snapped, but the line stayed still. And that's, I mean, I don't care how good your running back. Watch, these guys are staying in their stance. The ball was snapped. The quarterback gave it to the back. And he said, whoops, there's no blocks. So miscommunication on the snap count, and that's a, that's a throwaway play. You know, you, you, you get a little bit of momentum going there. You get a first down. That's Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator. And then you go backwards, and now it's second and 13. Son of Lou and Beth. Second down, 13. A little half roll right. Pinkins puts it up, throws it, and throws it away. Hard to go sideline to sideline against this defense. I, mean, I don't care how fast you are or how mobile you are if you're a quarterback. That's the, to me, the real strength of this Georgia defense is they can run from side to side so well. David Pollock, see if he uh, begins to encourage the crowd now. Been known to do that. Pinkins now 3 of 10 for 20 yards. He has missed his last six. Steps back up. Thomas Davis got him. Thomas Davis is an interesting athlete. He is the starting free safety, but he was supposed to be the starting strong side linebacker. And on certain third down situations, they put him as a stand-up defensive end and let him rush the passer. He came from a defensive line position and shot through there so quickly, Pinkins couldn't get rid of the football. But a very talented athlete who is uh, playing a lot of different positions. That will force a punt. And it's Joey Bowers. They call the fake again. Now he's a pooch kick. Well, that was very effective, huh? Yes, it was. Run the ball to the right. If they finally diagnose it, pull up and pooch it. You know, and your guys can run down the field. I mean, it's not like the NFL where only the outside guys can run. So it's the same formation. See if the fake is there. If you don't think you can do it, pull back and give it a kick. Tricky Lou does it again. Good on you, lad. Nice play, South Carolina. Two brothers, one kid, no grown-ups. Charlie Sheen stars in the new comedy Two and a Half Men. It's premiering Monday, September 22nd, after Raymond on CBS. New quarterback for Georgia, D.J. Shockley. First in game, Georgia. Mark Rick said it's a little different this year. I mean, he still plans to play him in the first half, but he's not promising him when he's going in the game. He doesn't say X series. He just is doing it by feel, and this is when it feels right for Mark Rick. David Green telling us yesterday that he believes he and Shockley both bring something different to the table. Here's one of the things that Shockley brings. And while we've got a moment, let's spend it with Tim Brando in New York. All right, fellas, the nation's longest winning streak remains intact because of curious play calling by North Carolina State. T.A. McClendon, you see his rear end on the ground. He's not in during the overtime. Ohio State wins 44-38. NC State called two quarterback sneaks in their final drive inside the 10. We'll talk about it at halftime. All right, Tim, your old colleagues out the Lou Holtz in South Carolina trailing here by 10. On second down, fumble, balls on the ground. Well, credit George Gauze, the defensive end. They ran the option two plays in a row, 
The first time very successful. The second time, Gauze knocked down the pitch and created the fumble. George Gauze was in on DJ Shockley so quickly. Watch number 99, and he knocks the pitch down. And Jason Capers, number 90, is going to come up with the football, but it was George Gauze, the defensive end, that made the play. Well, that's seven turnovers, seven takeaways now for South Carolina in two games and one full quarter. Takeaway something in which they were deficient a year ago. They had only 21 for the season. Seven now in two and a quarter games. This is where South Carolina has to take advantage of it. They ruined their field position on the fake punt. They've got it again here. Quarterback draw Pinkins. You see him and he's a load, guy. yes. I mean, he's putting two arms on the ball like a fullback. And he's a 250-pounder. And he just tucked it up in there for a nice game. Dondrell Pinkins is a big dude. I mean, he is a big physical guy. He's got both arms wrapped around the football, and he does something, Vern, I I've never seen. I mean, when he throws the football, he just grabs it with no finger or thumb or anything on the laces. I mean, he just grabs the football and chucks it. Let me see if we can follow that. He might be throwing here. Nope, not on this play. And that'll be close for the first down. The spot is going to be right on the 25-yard line. It's interesting. I mentioned earlier the Manning Passing Academy down in Hammond, Louisiana, and I was one of the coaches down there. Peyton and Eli and Archie invited me down, and when I showed up at the airport, I, I rode from the airport in New Orleans with Dondrell Pinkins and David Green. And we were all in the car together, and we got to the check-in, and they put David Green and Dondrell Pinkins together as roommates. And uh, it was just kind of neat to see those guys interact and work with the kids there. And then one day they, they got to throw the football for all the campers. Third down, quarterback sneak appears to have the first down. Well, they will uh, not have to measure. It is a first down. And time now to answer the Aflac trivia Aflac. question. That's what I said. <laughs> Is there an echo in here? <laughs> Which two teams has Georgia, has South Carolina played more than Georgia? Clemson or Clemson and <laughs> Wake Forest? First down. Pinkins still has it, but he's going to lose yardage. Uh, Good job by the middle linebacker, Odell Thurman. Now that's that's called going to the well one too many times. It was the same kind of play, fake to the back, quarterback keep. And uh, that time, Georgia was ready for it, and they knocked him backwards. Loss of three. So you've never seen anybody throw it? I never have, no. Now, I talked to Mark Rick and asked him, has he ever seen anybody? Skip Holt said, no, he's never seen anybody. Mark Rick said, well, Anquan Bolden, when he came to Florida State, that's what he did. Well, here's the no laces pass. It's down low. It's incomplete. That is ruled a trap. And it'll be third down. Skip Holt said that he tried to get him to throw with the laces. But he didn't like it. It wasn't comfortable. And as you want, there's the laces right by his ear. I mean, you know, the laces are right there. I mean, there's no finger or thumb or anything. And Skip said, hey, if it doesn't affect him throwing it, I'm not going to change him. He throws a better spiral. He throws the ball more comfortably with no hand on the fingers on the laces. So let him go. And his hand is so big that it, it doesn't really make a difference even if the ball's wet. Now, laces or no, he has missed his last seven. On third down. Steps up, goes deep in the corner. Williamson got it. That's good for a touchdown. Flag is down. And David Pollock is indicating it's going to go against Carolina. It will. My, oh, my. People say, you know, is David Pollock going to have the same kind of year? 14 sacks a year ago, Holy 23 tackles behind man. the line of scrimmage. Yards the line of scrimmage. He may not he have the back. same numbers, but he will be every bit as disruptive because of how hard he plays. Here he is right here. Now watch him on this play. He never slows down. He never takes a playoff. He comes inside of Goddard. He stays with it. 
Boy, I don't know where the hold was on that one. That looked like they got their hands inside pretty well on him, but he's so relentless that he makes it difficult to, to play against. Third and 23, second big play wiped out by a holding call in the ball game against South Carolina. Trying to screen pass. It's set up pretty slowly, and there is Thomas Davis, who nails Kenny Irons. Now and we're a gonna, flag yeah. roughing the passer. Yeah. Now we're going to have a roughing the pass. Boy, a lot of penalties in this first half. Neither head coach is going to be pleased about this in the locker room. Ray Gant, a redshirt freshman, number 51, at the end of the play. Let him go. You know, it, there's no need for that. Let him go. Okay. Maybe this is where the hold was. Travell Wharton on this side, working against Quentin Moses. I don't know. That doesn't look like a hold there either. I don't think there was any holding on the previous. But, you know, you hate to say makeup call, but the result is kind of a makeup call. But it still doesn't take away the fact that the holding call on South Carolina eliminated a touchdown. This just gives South Carolina the football again. And it will give it to them at the 21-yard line. And an automatic first down. Third penalty for Georgia. Two holding calls. One wiped out a 24-yard gain to the Georgia 11. That was in the first quarter. The most recent wiped out a touchdown. And remember the penalty, the unsportsmanlike on the fake punt. I mean, critical penalties. Well play. Kenny Irons trying to find room to dance. He's taken down. Gained one to the 20-yard line. We were talking about Thomas Davis. We chatted with him yesterday. In high school at Shelman, Georgia, he was a safety and a defensive end, but he also played tailback and tight end. He punted and place kicked. Yeah. And then when he wasn't busy, <laughs> he, he was the sixth man on the high school basketball team, and it was a good one. And he ran a 10.6 100-meter dash. He is a great athlete, and uh, Brian Van Gorder really wanted him to be the linebacker, but because of some injuries to some safeties, he had to move back. Option. There's Kedrick Golston, number 97, to make the tackle as Pinkins keeps it. It'll be third down. Just to follow up on that, I mean, Kentrell Curry was the starting safety, one of the starting safeties. He has a stress fracture in his lower leg, and his backup, Greg Blue, injured his knee in training camp. So they were really scuffling in the back of their defense. There's Kentrell Curry. They hope to get him back after their open week, after the game against LSU next week. And once they get him back, Thomas Davis probably will move back to that strong linebacker position. Red zone defense thus far this year. Yet to yield to TD. There's the rolling pocket. Pinkins fires it. Intercepted by Tony Taylor. Tony Taylor in his first year as a starting linebacker. Gets the pick. Well, when Pinkins goes this way, watch Tony Taylor just watch his eyes. See, Pinkins doesn't see him coming from his blind side, and he gets right in front of the, pr the throwing lane. When you roll out that way, you don't see the backside of the formation. And Tony Taylor came and stole one away. Five fifty-three to go, first half. Tony Taylor's first interception of the year, first of his career in his first season as a starting linebacker. 17 tackles last week against Middle Tennessee and a big interception in his own territory today. Cooper got some room, slips a tackle, rumbles out near the 34-yard line. It's going to be just short for the first down. Well, Tony Taylor's dad, Nate, a starting linebacker at Georgia in 1979. That was the last year when a fresh set of linebackers came in, this is last year's starting trio. Gilbert, Boss Bailey, Chris Clemens. And you go all the way back to 1979 for the last trio of new linebackers in a single season. One of whom was Tony Taylor's dad. Michael Cooper. Tackle made by Jeremiah Garrison. 
Georgia went six and five that year but the next year with those three having some experience they went to 19 the national championship we saw Buck Ballou before the game he was the quarterback of that Georgia team third and two That's good uh, penetration by the South Carolina defense. Now one thing about South Carolina, they're physical. Watch these guys get underneath, get that penetration. Linebackers in there quickly, and Cooper with no chance to really get started on that run and a huge stop on third down. Dante Robinson is back to return the punt now of Gordon Ely Kelso, Richard Freshman. From Athens. Ryan Jordan will snap it back. And another fine punt by Eli Kelso. Robinson, fair catch taken at the 16 yard line. Premiering Thursday on CBS, the new survivors think they have time to prepare. They are wrong. Boom, we're throwing them overboard without warning and with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Get ready for the wildest survivor ever. Survivor Pearl Islands premieres this Thursday at 8 p.m. on CBS. <laughs> it's kind of pirate music, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear that in Seabiscuit. <laughs> oh, let's see. South Carolina down by 10, 3.50 to go, first half. Mike Rath is a new quarterback. He's a junior college transfer from Mesa Community College in California. Hand off right side, nothing doing. Good pursuit by Georgia. Mike Rath has not passed the ball yet this year. He has two runs for five yards, limited experience with this program. And he comes on in place of Dondrell Pinkins. And I think it might be just to let Dondrell take a seat for a while. He may be back in the game, but Lou Holtz doesn't like bad decisions with the football. And both of the interceptions really were bad decisions on Pinkins part. And so now a, a new gunslinger in there and see what he can do. San Diego, California. Transferred over from Mesa Community College. And there's David Pollock trying to get the crowd into it. Here comes Pollock from the backside, giving chase. Raff intercepted by Sean Jones, his second of the game, and give a huge pat on the back to number 47. Well, I just mentioned bad decisions by the quarterback position. This one may be the worst of the three. Under duress, watch Pollock stay with the play. He bites on the fake, but he doesn't give up on the play. And because of his pursuit, Mike Rath makes a bad decision, throwing with his body going one way, trying to throw back into the field of play. That is the formula for disaster. And Sean Jones there to take it away. Second interception of the first half for Sean Jones. David Green, a quarterback, on first and ten. Three-man rush, slip it left side. Michael Johnson. That Fred Gibson re injured a hamstring is on the bench for the remainder of the game, and Ben Watson, the tight end, re injured an ankle, so he is also out for the remainder of this one. Well, I really think that Mark Rick is going to try to go hard for the end zone on this drive. Two minutes and 45 seconds left in the first half, a chance to go up 17. Saw the blitz threatened and uh, the audible from David Green. Got a lot of time. Good downfield coverage. Nice defense. Yeah, coverage sack and Gauze got him. They fooled him. They showed blitz. David Green changed the play expecting a blitz. And then they backed out and only rushed three. See these guys in here? They're showing blitz. But they're going to all drop out of there after the audible. Watch. David Green sees it. He calls the check. And then as soon as the ball snapped, they all drop out. They drop eight and rush three. And David Green has nowhere to go with the football. And then they get the sack. George Gauze with another big play. That's a loss of 13. It's third and 16. With 2.04 to go first half. 
Georgia has two timeouts remaining. Here comes the blitz. Matt Green fires it. Nice play. Reggie Brown close for the first down at the 27-yard line. Boy, oh boy. You know, you make the big sack, then you bring the pressure, but you can't get to him this time, and Reggie Brown continues his fast start this season. Nice route shielding the defender away from his body, and he knew where the first down was. He got past that first down marker. That was David Green's father. The Green family and the Pollock family, very, very close. David and David are now roommates, as we said, at Georgia. There's a handoff and the run to the 27-yard line. And time now for our SEC moment presented by Sonic. Let's check in with Jill. Yes, Vern, it was 10 years ago when it was here in Athens. It was a classic between these two teams with just seven minutes to go in the game. Frank Harvey scored, giving Georgia a 21 to 17 lead. But with two seconds remaining, Brandon Bennett silenced the Bulldog faithful and gave the Gamecocks a 23 to 21 win, South Carolina's second conference road win ever. All right, Jill, time has been called by Georgia. That leaves them with one. One twenty-one to go before the break. Georgia leading 10 zip, facing a second down 11 at the South Carolina 28 yard line. David Green is hitting his last seven passes in a row here. Green goes deep in the middle. Johnson almost picked off. DeAndre Island had it in his hands at the three yard line. Excellent coverage that time by Island. Island has been a safety for most of his career, but he's a backup corner now, backing up Teddy Crawford and in on the slot receiver in this defensive set. And he did a nice job of stepping in front of that throw, just couldn't hang on to the football. Third and 11 with 1.15 to go. Johnson in the slot to the right side. Damian Gary outside. And Reggie Brown. They showed blitz again. Now let's see if they drop out after they drew the audible. They did. Four Brown. How Got it! Whoa! 20-yard pickup on third and 11. We mentioned that Brown has a 43-inch vertical leap. Dante Robinson is in good position, but that ball is just put in a place that only Brown can make the catch. It's outside, and either his guy catches it or it gets thrown away. Chris Koch said this about David Green. says he can throw it through a keyhole. That was a keyhole right there. Time call. We'll be right back. Time, South Carolina. 1-10 to go before halftime. 10-0 Georgia. Boy, a couple of huge third down conversions after the interception. Third and 15, they converted in that one. Third and 11, and inside the 10-yard line now. First and goal at the seven. Here's Green, quarterback draw. Hit just about the time he got to the line of scrimmage. Well, he'd have scored if he wouldn't have got tripped up because there was nobody in front of him. Preston Thorne, number 94, is the guy who made the contact. Now for the day, 12 of 18, 142 yards, typically efficient. Second and goal. And again, a three wide receiver set with Gibson injured. Here's Green, slant pattern, touchdown. Reggie Brown, second of the game. On the money. And Reggie Brown has stepped up to the challenge. With Fred Gibson injured and out. Reggie Brown was the go-to guy last week, and he's the go-to guy again this week. David Green looking at him all the way. The slant route and a sure catch by the junior, Reggie Brown. Had seven catches a week ago. He's got six this afternoon, and Billy Bennett's extra point is up and through. Really significant score right before the half. 17 zip. Second week in a row, Reggie Brown having a big day. This one perhaps more meaningful than a win over Middle Tennessee State. Six catches, 68 yards. He's got two touchdowns, three Georgia force turnovers. Reggie Brown there, the stats for the day. Now, last week, they made him a captain. 
and it was a real honor to him. And he wore that C on his jersey like a real badge of honor. He was the captain of the special team. Well, he doesn't have the C on his jersey today, but he sure is playing like one. Billy Bennett, he's kicked twice to his left, and that's where he goes again this time. And that's where you'll find Matthew Thomas at the four-yard line. Contact made, and Thomas driven down from 19. Jarvis Jackson, number 45, on the special teams, down to make the tackle then. And the directional kicking is good because it tells the guys running down there exactly where to go. And they got there in a bad state of mind. That was great kick coverage. Well, we had J.J. Jarvis Jackson and G.G. Gabe Galt helped out with it. Coming up, the Earthling halftime report, scores and highlights with Tim and Spencer. Donville Pinkins back at quarterback and a handoff given to Dacus Terman, the sophomore, number 20. You know, what Lou Holtz is going to tell his team at halftime is, you know, we should be right in this football game. But the penalties and the turnovers, you cannot do that against a good team, particularly on the road, and hope to have a chance to win. They're 17 down. But the turnovers and the penalties, most of which were the result of bad decisions, just you just can't do it and hope to win. Well, they would go to halftime down 17-0. A holding call against South Carolina wiped out a touchdown. It also wiped out a first down at the 11-yard line. Three interceptions off the arm of Dondrell Pinkins. All of which has led to a 17-0 lead. We go down to Jill, who's with Lou Holtz. Well, thank you, Vern. South Carolina's made some opportunities for themselves, but you can't capitalize with the turnovers and the penalties. Coach, what are you going to tell this team? Well, three turnovers. You can't play a George and do that. Uh, that was critical. Then two penalties called away back two big plays. And then third down. Green's having a great day. We can't get pressure. We're playing pretty well after the first drive. We settled down, but we can't stop third down. They're just one-on-one -on -one, he's checking off and they're just beating us one-on-one -on -one. all right coach good luck back to you guys that's the end of the first half with our score 17 nothing let's go to tim brando in new york 92,000 in the neighborhood enjoying georgia's 17 nothing lead of the six with reason to bark Reggie Brown with two touchdown catches among his six grabs in the first half 17 nothing Georgia they opened this season on the road at Clemson winning that game 30 to nothing they've given up 10 points two and a half games so far Billy Bennett will kick off one of the deep men is Troy Williamson he is a speedster had a 99 yard pass reception for a touchdown in South Carolina's win over Virginia last week. Bennett, same place, left side. Matthew Thomas bounces off the initial effort. Got some room. And South Carolina will open this half with good field position as they will be out with a first down and 10 at the 39 yard line and a flag is down. I think there was a block in the back on South Carolina and I think we're going to see the same pattern to start the third quarter. A good play for the Gamecocks nullified by a penalty. I think it was an illegal block on the kicker Billy Bennett if I'm not mistaken. Block in the back on the return. It's the return team. Ten yards for the spot of the foul. First down. Yeah, and that is the sixth foul against the South Carolina Gamecock team, so it negates the fine field position they had. Let's talk a little bit about this uh, Georgia defense that's impressed you so much. Well, I made the point earlier in the game. I think that this defense could be even better than the defense last year because they're going to have more speed on the field. They played ten quarters of football, and they've had eight of them shutout quarters. I mean, you mentioned only ten points they've given up. 
They're very fast. They've taken away the South Carolina passing game in the first half. Here's a quick toss to Andrell Pinkins. Left side. That goes to Dacus Terman. And at the halftime, we'll break it down statistically for you. 17 to nothing. Georgia with an edge in first downs. Pinkins has thrown three interceptions. Only 21 passing yards for South Carolina in the first half. It's second down and three at the 19. I mean, four for 14 with three interceptions. I mean, that, there's not a lot of encouraging news with your passing game, but I guess the good news is they got a new 30 minutes here. Here's the quarterback draw. Successful on this play. That's a first down, South Carolina, at the 26. Arnold Harrison, number 46, makes the tackle. Well, punt, interception, punt, interception, interception, half. Yeah. And, and Lou said it. I mean, you can't beat a team as good as Georgia in their stadium by turning the ball over and having those costly penalties. And, uh, you know, the, the only bright side is it is only 17. You know, I mean, it, it's not 30, it's not 45. I mean, it's still just three scores away if they can just get something going here. Well, if it works once, try it again. And uh, Pinkins, who has not had success throwing it, gets three yards on the first down run. David Pollock having his normal active game. He's in on the tackle here. And, you know, some guys just have a certain conditioning about them where they can just play hard every play and don't need as much rest as some other guys. He's one of those guys. Said he had improved his speed and his strength and has gained a couple of pounds this year. Not in great increments, but in every category. And off. No, Pinkins, nice, uh, nifty play fake, and he goes right side. He's out to the 36-yard line. Yeah, nifty little play fake and a fairly productive play, but that they're not going to get back in this game just by doing that. I mean, they're going to have to throw the football and have some balance in their offense. Again, you, you can't run side to side against this defense very much. Now, Pinkins was able to get outside of Tony Taylor on this play, but... Very rarely is that going to happen against this Georgia defense. Third and one, Kenny Irons, number 22, is the running back behind Dondrell Pinkins. There's Pinkins with a quarterback sneak. Odell Thurman, the middle linebacker, there to fill the gap and see what they give him or what he earned. He didn't earn very much. I mean, you'd think at 6'3", 250, a guy could fall forward for one yard. But, again, look how low. Look at the penetration. Look how low Georgia was. I mean, they got under the blocks, and there was nowhere for Dondrell Pinkins to go. I think that was Ray Gant, number 51, who was down in that frog stance underneath the block. And Lou Holtz sends Joey Bowers on. He's run out of punt formation once he ran another time and then pooch kicked it right before he got to the line of scrimmage fourth and one David Pollock was in the neighborhood but uh, Bowers with a nice punt and this one will come to rest at the 10 yard line you know that's to me is a perfect example of David Pollock how many guys are going to rush the punt that full out on a play like that. 17 to nothing. David Pollock's going just as hard on that play as any play in the game. On the NFL today, you know you've achieved a certain status when it's just first name only. Up the middle, Michael Cooper. And this crowd here. Well, we talked a lot about the 4-3. That is today's default coach's decision. Here's Dante Robinson. We get a lot more pressure. Uh, you know, uh, defensive line and linebackers, you know, they're doing a great job. So, uh, you know, and they're forcing quarterbacks to throw the ball fast. And uh, we're getting a lot of tip pass. Uh, just got to get, just got to catch some. So uh, <laughs> I think uh, that the defense works out in our favor. Now today it has uh, not caused Georgia much trouble. Especially on third down. I mean, that's been a big improvement. And I made this point earlier as we get ready to see another big third down play. I think in the long run, this change will be beneficial for South Carolina. They've got more defensive linemen in their program now, and they'll be able to uh, rotate guys in there more. But today, 
as you take a look at how they've improved through two games coming into today from last year's first two games to this year, everything much better. But I think today Georgia has been more tuned into this defense because it's been so familiar to them. But third down, first half, Georgia converted 63%. Play fake, David Green puts it on the line, makes the catch, and a flag, two flags are down. As a matter of fact, it's Damian Gary who made the grab, the senior from Athens. And he made it on Teddy Crawford, who got up limping a little bit at the end of that play. Teddy Crawford, who was the high school teammate of Georgia quarterback David Green. And that's going to be pass interference against South Carolina. Another yeah, penalty. Six for nine also on third down conversions. Again, this is one of the reasons they wanted to switch to the 4-3. And the pitch. Gets the defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Last year, they struggled on third down. They, they gave up to their opponents 47% conversions on third down. They weren't getting enough consistent pressure. Now coming into today, only 23%. But again today, Georgia and David Green have been in a great rhythm on third down. Craig Lumpkin makes an appearance in the backfield. Jeremy Thomas is his blocking back. And here's Lumpkin. Nice little switch from left hand to right as he got around the edge and moves out across the 31-yard line. An eight-yard game. He's a little more physical looking of a back than some of the other guys carrying the ball for Georgia this year. Remember, Musa Smith last year was a big physical running back. Now with the Baltimore Ravens, Lumpkin at 211 pound, true freshman. Looks pretty good right now. 3,500 yards on the ground his last two years of high school in Laconia, Georgia. Here's Green, there's Michael Johnson. But David Green is just. He's just terrific. Yeah, he's just he, he's a rhythm player. I mean, and he is in that rhythm right now. You, you hear other guys in other sports, whether it's a basketball player talking about being in the zone. David Green gets in that zone. Now, that little play action fake does just enough to hold linebackers and outside defenders to raise up and make the throw. But he knows exactly where he wants to go with the football as soon as he comes out of that fake. First down and 10. Green hands it off to Lumpkin. Try to sweep to the left side and uh, not much going on that play. The other thing I think that Georgia does a really nice job of, and David Green, it's not just the quarterback because it's the running backs carrying out their fakes. It's also the linemen. They make that play action pass and the run look so similar. And that's important because you can't run the football and then when you go play action, make it look automatically like a pass. They do a great job of blending the run and pass and that really freezes some defenders. Second down. Eight. Here's the play fake again. Green finds it. Oh, oh, almost picked off. Ricardo Hurley, number 42. Well, David Green, two touchdowns in the ball game today. Well, this was the fade route to Reggie Brown in the corner of the end zone, and then the slant route to the same receiver. And that has definitely been his go-to guy the last two weeks. But, again, if you can't get to David Green and disrupt his tempo and disrupt his rhythm, you have no chance. There's his father. Third and eight. There's Green. Tries to get out of trouble. It'll be fourth down at the 50-yard line. And good coverage downfield. That time they did disrupt him. He wasn't able to hit that last foot and throw it on rhythm. Good coverage downfield. A little change up in the coverage. A zone defense. And Georgia forced a punt. Fourth and six at 50. Fourth and six at the 50. They moved it out from their own 10-yard line. One difference, though, you see with David Green. When it wasn't there, he didn't force it and throw the ball in a bad place. He took the sack and brought the punt team on. We haven't seen that from the other team. Ely Kelso to punt for the third time, and the freshman running back, Demetra Summers, at the 10-yard line. This one not as effective, but it does take uh, Georgia bounce on one hop. Summers, not to the 16-yard line. 40-yard punt, six on the return for number 31, Demetra Summers. South Carolina has it, but they trail by 17.
Back at Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia, on the campus of the university. And Georgia leading 17-0 SEC battle between South Carolina, the Gamecocks, who have a first down and 10, and the Georgia Bulldogs. South Carolina's got to get Troy Williamson into the ballgame. I mean, he's a weapon that has not been utilized very much today. Bacus Terman, number 20. And let's uh, spend a moment back in New York. Here's Tim Brando. Oh, the pride of Pullman. Washington State, Sammy Moore. Opening kickoff, Vern, of the second half. As I say, he found the picket fence, and he goes all the way for six to make it 30 to 13 against the Buffaloes. Back to Vernon Todd. Oh, my goodness, Tim. Well, they're jumping in the Palouse. And a little happy, unhappy in Boulder. Well, they let one slip away in South Bend last week, and they've recovered nicely. Hart Turner drops the pass. He had two drops on third down last week. His two among the seven drops for South Carolina a week ago. And that is the fourth drop today. Well, Lou Holtz is beside himself. I mean, they don't know what to do because in practice, they've caught the ball extremely well. It's only been in the games that they've had the problems. They've resorted, you know, resorted to relaxation techniques in the locker room on Thursday night again this week. But 21 drop passes in three games, that's not a good number. Pinkins out of the shotgun on third down. Here comes the blitz. Thomas Davis. Pinkins finds Williamson out on the left side at the 25. And that's going to be close for the first down. Bruce Thornton with the tackle, and let's check in with Jill Arrington. Well, you're right, Todd. You heard Coach Holtz tell us before the game, he has been putting those wide receivers through visualization techniques because he says, you're right, they're catching them in the practice but not in the games, and I guess it's still not working. They need to do some more visualizing and catch those balls. Yeah, I don't, you know, it's one of those things where you don't want to, you, you can overcoach it. You know, you can emphasize it so much that guys are thinking about it too much, and then they don't relax at all. So, I, I don't know. It's kind of a crazy thing, but uh, Troy Williamson, who made that catch, it, again, is a guy they've got to get more involved in this game. To have a chance to win, they need some big plays out of their passing game, and he's one of the guys that can give it to them. And here is the stretch in the near side, and didn't get it. Fourth down. Fourth down. Now, do you roll the dice? Well, you remember the last short yardage situation. They tried to go quarterback sneak with their big quarterback. And 51, Ryan Gant got underneath the block, just kind of submarine, and stopped the short yardage. Let's see if he gets into the same kind of a stance and if they try something different. Looks like Lou Holtz is a Longhorn fan. Fourth down. How about this? On the road, down 17-0. Quarterback having problems. Fourth and a foot. Dacus Terman is the running back. Dondrell Pinkins, all 250 pounds of him, is at quarterback. And that was David Pollock. Close. I think they got it. Yeah, good he, spot. He got knocked back, but I think he got it. And uh, he did a nice thing. He kind of paused for just a half a second to find a crease. The two inside tackles went for that low, uh, same type of technique, but I think he got it by going a little bit off to the left of his center. The slight pause. Good job of officiating by the line judge. You see he came in. Put that left foot down. It is a first down, South Carolina. Yeah, you always want that left foot spot. Yep. You don't want the right footed spot. Right. That left one is a little bit further down the way. I heard an announcer who weighs a little more than you talk about that once. <laughs> Average gain on first down, less than three for South Carolina. Well, and part of that is because they've not thrown the football worth a lick. You know, and, and first down is a good down to throw. Shotgun formation again. Pinkins pumps out in the flat, goes deep. Got a man! At 
at the 36-yard line. The catch made by Chavez Donnings. A 38-yard grab. Well, this is really a well-designed play because they fake the screen here, and then they're going to hit the post in here. So George's defense sees him raise up, and they think he's going to throw that quick flare, but it's a pump fake, and then they come back to the post in the middle of the field in an excellent throw by Pinkins. Donnings with the catch, a 38-yard gain. They had 36 yards passing prior to that play. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Quarterback draw again. David Pollock makes the tackle. We'll go back to New York and spend a moment with Tim Brando. Vern, 111,726 at the big house, an all-time record. The University of Michigan thanks you and Chris Perry. 24-0 after this, his third touchdown of the day. Elsewhere, USC, three touchdowns the last four and a half minutes. Liner to Mike Williams for the last one. It's 31-6 Trojans. I'm not surprised by that no. Michigan-Notre Dame goal. The smoke and mirrors only work so long, yep. you know? I mean, and pretty soon you got to strap it on and play, and I don't know that they have the same kind of people that Michigan has right now. Second down and eight, 17 nothing in the ball game. Here's Kenny Irons breaking one tackle, getting loose inside the 30, and he'll be down at the 26-yard line. You know, and you can just feel, I mean, that was such a huge breath of life breathed into the South Carolina offense. I mean, finally, they got a play. And, uh, Dondrell Pinkins, you can see, just looks a little bit better. Chad Walker is a new center in the ballgame now, in for John Strickland. So something to keep an eye on with the shotgun snaps or under the center snaps, a new center in the ballgame. Walker wearing number 75. And Dondrell Pinkins needs to be aware of that and stay with it a little bit longer. Third and one. Oh, my Hello. goodness. <laughs> Robert Gathers, number 90. And another fourth and one. Now the problem without running with a, a one back set, you have no lead blocker. And so there was nobody there for Gathers. And that's one where you hit and go straight back. There is no forward motion. Fourth and one. The center Strickland is back in the ball game now. This one is a little bit longer than the last fourth down. This is not fourth and less than one. This is a good one. And a good time for a timeout. I'm not so sure Lou Holtz agrees with that timeout. One year ago, Daniel Weaver was only four of ten from kicking field goals beyond the 30. This would be a 43-yard effort. They have decided to go from the line of scrimmage. Handoff. Sean Jones. Georgia ball. Well, Sean Jones cleaned it up, but David Pollock set it up. I mean, <laughs> these guys are unreal. I mean, they are so fast at the point of attack. But watch David Pollock get across the line right here and force the action, and Sean Jones finished him off. Pollock with the quick move, the penetration, and Sean D Jones untouched from inside out, and a huge play on fourth. Jones, six tackles today. And the pressure from Pollock, first down, after the ball goes over on downs, Green tipped away at the 38-yard line. Leonard Pope, number 81, a true freshman tight end, was the intended receiver. You know, you go back, I think it was a good point that you made about why they didn't try the field goal. If they would have tried a field goal there, they're down two scores. You take a look at this fourth down play again. Lou Holtz electing to go for it on fourth down, and Georgia had that play just snuffed out from the get-go. But, you know, he just doesn't have that trust in his kicker and felt like he needed to go for it. And that was a long one yard on fourth down that they needed. Now, well, David Green, well, a flag has been thrown in the backfield. Dead ball. Substitution foul. Missy offense. Five yards. 
a lot of times what happens is they have 12 guys in the huddle and they you know they get their personnel a little bit mixed up and the guy coming off the field right now is a true freshman Leonard Pope a backup backup tight end who was out there and shouldn't have been out there now listed as the fourth team tight end second down and 15 so they gate the timeout call there's a handoff right side Ronnie Powell, number 20, surging around the right side and uh, picking up a lot of yardage. That might be enough to move the chain. All right, nice block from his guard, Josh Brock, Brock to number 60. As you take a look at the feet of Ronnie Powell dancing in and out. And just really red, set up that block by Josh Brock, the sophomore from Cartersville, Georgia, and turned in a nice run for a first down. 15-yard gain, first down at the 42. Late third quarter. Green tipped. Incomplete. Looks like Daryl Shropshire, number 57, the junior college transfer. He's in a defensive tackle. Got a hand up. They've got a couple nice looking defensive tackles in there now. Both of them, uh, Freddie St. Pro and Shropshire, both junior college transfers. Same pro played at Dodge City Community College and Shropshire at Coffeyville, both out in Kansas. Our guys that were originally recruited by South Carolina and put in junior college by South Carolina and uh, now stepping up and playing a starting role in this new front four. Second and 10, Georgia at the 42. And off to Powell, he comes right, gets a good block and is uh, carried out to the 48-yard line before the tackle made. 2.40 to go in the third quarter. These two teams have split in the last four times they've met. Uh, South Carolina, you look at Lou Holtz and South Carolina, what they've done against Ford and Tennessee, I think they're like 1-21 in, in the last 11 years. Well, they're 4-7 against a very good Georgia program. And since Lou Holtz has been here, as you mentioned, 2-2 two two against this team, 0-8 oh against Florida and Tennessee. So this is a game where coming in, they feel very confident that they can not only play with Georgia, but have a great chance to win. Good block by Powell. And the pass complete because of Powell's block. Damian Gary makes the grab. See, what you tell a running back in this situation, it's a play-action pass, but you say, if you see a blitz off the outside, you abort the fake. Get out of the fake and make sure you get your block. See, his eyes were right on the blitz from the outside, so he gets rid of the fake and makes sure he protects his quarterback. If he would have stayed with the fake a little bit longer, David Green would have never gotten this throw off. Ronnie Powell and Michael Cooper getting a lot of playing time today. Tony Milton, who was the starter in the first two games, not able to suit up. And here's Cooper on for Powell. Let's go down to Jill Arrington, who's with Tony Milton. Jill? Well, Tony, I know you're not on the field and you want to be. Tell us a little bit how that leg injury is coming along. Oh, it's coming along well. Hopefully next week I'll be able to play at LSU. What did you tell these guys? Michael Cooper is all over the field. And what did he say to you after his big first half? I told him just run hard, you know, and keep their head up, you know, because the, the momentum's going our way right now. So. All right, let's watch this play. Second down. Backs in the eye. Cooper is the deep back. Play fake again. Green slant pattern tipped away by Dante Robinson. And let's go back down to Jill. Now, how about Lumpkin? He's looking pretty good out there. Is he feeling himself and getting ready to play? What did you tell him? Uh, he's been battling injuries. You know, I told him just keep his head up and uh, just go out there and, and play his game. All right. Well, it looks like they're taking your advice and doing well. Good luck with that injury recovery. We hope to see you on the field soon. Vern? Thank you, Thank you Jill. Thank you, Tony Milton. One of the, the nice stories in college football. A young man who was homeless, lived in his car for a while, was taken in by a coach who recommended him to Mark Richt took and passes SAT and he is on schedule for a graduation. Here's Green. Brown got it. First and goal. One of the games within a game is third down. That was the seventh conversion in 11 attempts for Georgia on third down. This shouldn't happen. Third down, 
Double coverage, zone defense, and the defender's too far away from Reggie Brown. And an easy conversion. Michael Cooper over the top and into the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. They mix the run and the pass, and Michael Cooper up and over the top easily for the Georgia touchdown. Bennett. Three for three extra points today. 96 in a row. Michael Cooper. 24 zip. Forty seconds to go, third quarter. David Green, take a look from behind. David Green. Yeah, they only rushed four. Good protection by Georgia. Good sight lines down the field for the quarterback, and another huge conversion on third down. 329 total yards now for the Georgia offense in three quarters. Here's the ball going into the end zone, touched <laughs> and coming out. To the 20-yard line. Unusual perspective of Ugga. Well, college doubleheader for you next weekend. The Home Depot, SEC on CBS. First game, Tennessee at Florida. And the second game, Georgia at LSU, Tigers Stadium. Might be a fun game to watch. Absolutely. Might be a fun game to see in person. Both games next weekend. On CBS. 24 zip, first and 10. This is never good. I mean, <laughs> they don't have enough offensive linemen in the game. As if they're not having enough trouble blocking the Georgia defense, they don't quite have all their uh, horses in there. And that was Jonathan Alston hurrying on. And this one lands at the feet of Bacus Terman. Rushing yards. This is a South Carolina team that rushed for 261 yards a week ago. 261. I think you're talking about, even though I think Virginia is a good up-and-coming team in the ACC, this is a little different animal here with the Georgia Bulldogs. At home, too. This is a fast, talented defense. And off to Terman. Out to the 25 yard line. You know, you, we talked about some of the guys that they had to replace off this defense. The, all three linebackers, Gilbert and Bailey, both drafted in the NFL. Clemens got signed as a free agent, but probably the biggest loss was their interior tackle, Jonathan Sullivan, who was the sixth pick in the draft, going to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, you know, they haven't quite just reloaded, but they're going to be an excellent defense the further along these young guys get to play. Plus, when they get Kentrell Curry and Greg Blue back, they'll be even better. That's the end of the third quarter with our score 24 nothing. We'll return to Sanford Stadium right after this message and a word from your local station. Now, the guy on the left is the guy who can throw it, and he throws it with his left hand. The roommates, David Green, David Pollock, we are back for the beginning of the final quarter. Ugga pitching a shutout against the Gamecocks, 24-0. Across the middle, this one is caught by the tight end, Hart Turner. And it's 24 as if you got the idea, Todd, yesterday, talking with Neil Calloway and Mark Rick. They had, there was a comfort factor going up against this uh, new game back defense. Well, again, it's a 4-3 defense. A lot of the schemes, the blitzes, the coverage is very similar to what the Georgia defense plays. So they're much more familiar. So that coming into the game, it wasn't preparing for that unorthodox defense, and they had a much better plan, a much higher comfort level. The last three years, they gained under 300 yards in the whole game. Today, 329 yards in three quarters. On first down, here comes Pollock. And the pressure from Pollock... He gets help from the inside. And Quentin Moses made contact with Pinkins about the time the ball was released. Well, 
you know, you, you keep saying the same things about him. The, the thing that makes him so hard is he, to play is here we are in the fourth quarter, and he is still going fast every play. I mean, he has a he has an engine that does not slow down, and that man, that is a pain for offensive linemen. Six tackles and a half a sack. He had 14 a year ago, but the point made that he played alongside Jonathan Sullivan, seeing a few more double teams this year. This one behind Troy Williamson. And let's go back to New York. Once again, here's Tim Brando. Vernon Todd, let's take a look at our Verizon Wireless top performance of the day. Jamal Brimmer, Las Vegas' is on a one-man wrecking crew. 55-yard fumble return for a touchdown. He intercepted Jim Sorge twice, leading to UNLV scores. Two sacks and a 23-5 upset of Wisconsin. Oh, that is, wow. that's an amazing victory for John Robinson. Yeah, you're not kidding. And UNLV. Good for them. Third and ten. Three men down for Georgia. They're going to bring five. Here's Pinkins out of the backfield, finds Williamson. That will move the chains out to the 45-yard line in front of Bruce Thornton. It's a 12-yard pickup. Now David Pollock and David Green, the quarterback and the defensive ends, best friends since they were six years old and played peewee football together. And uh, they have become roommates this year. You've got to live in the dorm at Georgia your first two years. So David Green roomed with John Stinchcomb. But uh, John graduated, went on to the NFL, and Pollock and Greeny are roommates this year. Pollock didn't even ask him. He just called him and said he's <laughs> on his way over. Come help me move my stuff. Up the middle. This is Dacus Terman out to the 38-yard line. Well, David Pollock talked about rooming with David Green. Some aspects I'm kind of like the mother, and then some aspects I'm kind of like the one getting taken care of. So, you know, we scratch each other's backs. You know, he's a mess. You know, people tell me to explain him. I just say he's a mess. You know, you never know. You never know what he's going to do or say. He'll always catch you by surprise. And uh, But he's fun. You know, he's a fun guy to be around. And, uh, you know, we have a great time together. Well, they both claim the apartment is clean. <laughs> Other witnesses beg to differ. He's a fun guy for us to visit with, uh, too, when we come in here. I mean, he's an entertaining, engaging young man. Here's Pinkins, incomplete. The pressure that time came from Robert Gathers, number 90. Gathers, number 90. Well, with so much attention on David Pollock, the other guys may get some one-on-ones, and he's working on the best lineman for USC, Travell Wharton. And he was able to beat him, and uh, but Pinkins able to, to get outside, but a nice hard rush that time by Gathers. I saw him make that nice play on the short yardage tackle on the inside. Pinkins for the day, 9 of 23, two interceptions. The other pick off the arm of Mike Rapp. Screen pass. Corey Boyd, number four, from Orange, New Jersey, getting the first action for the day for him. That's a gain of 12 yards. Boyd, a freshman, 6'1", 210 pounds. Skip Holt spoke real highly of this young kid. I mean, he said they got on him early in New Jersey and kind of before other people got on him. And uh, he was very interested. And I guess when he was in high school, he had long hair, had some dreadlocks, and he came on his recruiting visit. And Lou Holt said, now, son, you're going to have to cut your hair if you come here. And when he left, they thought for sure he was gone, that they'd never see Corey Boyd again. But he cut his hair and said he wanted to be a game cop. First down and 10. Here comes the corner blitz. Pinkins. Danny Verdun, Wheeler, number 42. David Pollock, Tony Taylor. There was a mass meeting. Second down and 13. Twenty-four zip, 12.02 to go. <laughs> Snap is back. Pinkins, right side. Chavez Donnings, number 83. His second catch of the day. Sundays this fall on CBS, Catherine Morris stars in the next great crime drama from CSI, executive producer Jerry Bruckheimer. Don't miss the premiere of Cold Case, Sunday, September 28th, 
right after 60 minutes. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah. A flag thrown after the play on Georgia. Could be for excessive yapping. Barking. <laughs> there you go. Head ball. Unsportsmanlike against the defense. At the distance of the goal from the end of the run. First well, time. as Jill mentioned, there's there's 15 guys on the South Carolina team that are from the state of Georgia, and every one of them has buddies that they either played with or against or knew that play on the Georgia team. So there's a lot of familiarity. Thomas Davis and Dondrell Pinkins played at rival high schools in both football and basketball. First down at the 12. 71 yards on 11 plays. Here's the pitch. And Terman... Knocked down by number 10, Thomas Davis came up and made the tackle. I'm not sure what the uh, vocal response from the crowd is about. Again, it's so hard to get outside this Georgia defense because of how well they run. And, uh, that was a fairly effective option play, but it, things look like they're open, but they close in a hurry with this defense. Second down, seven at the nine. Three men wide right, one split left. That's Williamson. Pinkins looking right all the way. Heaves it in the corner, and that will be incomplete. Ah, oh, near catch by the security guard. <laughs> Had a chance to shine. This is a tough part of the field to throw the football because... You don't have to defend the field if you're a defense. I mean, they can only go so far before they're out of the end zone. So you can really squeeze your coverages in this part of the field. 37 from the nine. They can get a first down, but this is a tough area to throw the football because the defense doesn't have to defend the depth of the field, only the width. Donning split wide right. Now Turner shifts over to the left side. Here comes the blitz. It'll be fourth down. Arnold Harrison with a nice play. Strong side linebacker. He's the guy that, that stepped in when they moved Thomas Davis back to the safety position. Arnold Harrison playing the strong side linebacker. Read that little tunnel screen the whole way. He saw Williamson coming in. There he is, number 46. He read it, and he got there before they could block him and made the play. Daniel Weaver will come on now. This one from 25. Josh Brown will hold it. Doink. Lou Holtz told us on the phone the other day that Daniel Weaver has a good leg, but he just lines kicks up wrong. He doesn't hook them. He doesn't slice them. If he misses them, he misses them right away. This one was a hair too far right, right away. Ouch. George's shutout continues. Now, it's time for the block of the day, presented by Earthlink. Jeremy Thomas is the fullback for Georgia. To be a good fullback in the I formation, you've got to be willing to stick your nose in there on a middle linebacker. Watch the block right there on the middle linebacker, Marcus Lawrence, that's going to spring his tailback, Michael Cooper. A fullback's job is not always fun. It's not always pretty, but it's very, very important. And Jeremy Thomas, a former walk-on, has done a great job so far today. For more on Earthlink's Block of the Day, log on to cbssportsline.com slash earthlink. Investigates, followed by Hack, and then Craig T. Nelson and the District, all here tonight on CBS, America's most watched network. Kicker can be a lonely guy at times. On first down, here's David Green going deep left side. Reggie Brown over the shoulder, out of bounds with the catch. Brown already with seven catches for 104 yards and two touchdowns today. And uh, if you did join us late, wide receiver Fred Gibson, probable or doubtful really much of the week, and then became questionable and then probable, started the game, injured a hamstring, and has not returned. It's kind of unusual. They had David Green in for that first play, made a pass, 
And now DJ Shockley's back in the game on second down. So we may have seen the last of David Green in this ballgame. This is Shockley's second appearance. Had one series in the first half. And here's the quarterback keeper around the right side after the 31-yard line. That's a gain of 11. Now yeah, let's go back once again to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vern, Gator quarterbacks may be feeling the residual effects of their loss to Miami. On the first play from scrimmage, Engel Martin picked off by Levy Brown of Florida A&M of the MEAC Conference. Remember, they'll go Division I beginning next year as an independent. All right, thank you, Tim. First down and 10 here. A 24-0 score, 9-10 to go. Sweep left side. Lumpkin. Those of you familiar with the Athens University area realize that this fellow, he's a freshman, he's already got a street named after him. <laughs> to try and escape Stanford Stadium, you take Lumpkin Drive. It takes a while. Yeah. Up to Broad, hang a left. I think the Lumpkin was actually a Chief Justice. We ran by his house the other day. First Georgia Chief Justice, I think, was named Lumpkin. That's pretty good. Thank you. At the 39-yard line on second down and three. DJ Shockley injured in this game a year ago. Had a foot injury and uh, sat out the next four games. Came back strong in midseason. But by that time, the plan to alternate them uh, had, had pretty much dissipated. Yeah, at this time last year, it was really kind of an, more of an issue because, you know, Mark Rick was insistent that he was going to play both, that he was going to have a set pattern of when he was going to bring Shockley in. And uh, when DJ got hurt, it kind of changed that. Now, this year, he still wants to play DJ, but he's going to do it by feel. And right now, uh, he'll probably finish out this game with seven minutes and 51 seconds left. Well, here's Jay Vines once again, 7.51 and 24 to nothing. Dead ball. Ball starts. It's the offense, five yards. Mains third down. Now we've talked a lot uh, throughout the afternoon about the number of friendships on either side of the line of scrimmage for these guys. Dante Robinson grew up 10 minutes from Sanford Stadium. His best friend is Damian Gary. They've spoken three times this week, and Damian Gary, the wide receiver for Georgia, Dante said they do not talk football during that time. But uh, come on, come on, dog. Come best down, friends, and that down. friendship has remained. Third down now, DJ Shockley. Lobs it out. Caught by Lumpkin short of the first down at the 39 yard line. Now, let's check in with Jill Arrington. Hi, Vern. Well, I found the Robinson family here. Willie and Betty and Dante is doing a great job, and I know it's great to see him out here at this level playing football. How is it to have him back home playing in front of such a big crowd? Oh, it was a great opportunity for him. Uh, he was a little bit nervous about coming back, but when you play in front of this crowd, 94,000 people, you know, you can't, can't help but to be nervous. They're back at the line. Let's watch this play. All right, Jill. Gordon Neely Kelso on to punt. Flag is down, and here is the catch made by Demetrius Summers at the 25-yard line. And uh, while they sort this out, let's uh, go back and spend time with Jill Arrington. Jill? Well, I must ask the mom, tell me a little bit about Damien growing up, being best friends. I'm sure you raised both of them, but is it nice to see them at this level? Yes, this is really nice to see both of them at this level and to see them play against each other and still be friends. Out of all these years, they're played. Dante really played behind Damien. Damien's a year older than him, and they played behind each other, and, and it's been really great. Well, I understand that you encouraged him to get out of Georgia and to go over to South Carolina. Why'd you push him out of the house, Mom? Well, I thought it would be better for him to get away where he's not right here, where it's so compact and it was so much to do and so many people here he knew. I thought it would be a great experience for him to go away and meet other people. All right, well, they're having great experience. How far away from home? Just a little bit. Well, I think you all see that C on his jersey. It has been a great experience for Captain Dante Robinson. In the red zone. The home 
Home Depot, SEC on CBS, is sponsored by Miller High Life, Verizon Wireless, Old Spice, and by Gap. Six and a half to go in the ball game. Georgia by 24 nothing. Last shutout they uh, served up to the South Carolina Gamecocks 1981. And already this year they blanked Clemson on the road 30 nothing. They lead this one 24 to 0. Here's Pinkins, four man rush, three man rush actually. Well, one of the most sensational plays of the season a year ago. David Pollock, Corey Jenkins, September 14th, watch number 47. Interception. <laughs> Yeah, it was a spectacular play. Just the reaction, and then the uh, the ball just kind of stuck to him. And Corey Jenkins, along with most of the 82,000 there in Columbia, didn't know what happened. I'll tell you who did. Guy to my left, Joe Castina. Called an interception right away. This one is uh, incomplete. Joe uh, and Chuck Gardner working with us again here in the booth. David Pollock. Well, Dondrell's probably saying, why don't you take 47 out of the game? You know, I mean, we, we don't need him in there anymore. It was funny when we were visiting with him and uh, we are in the meeting room and you asked him, would you, would you go anywhere this summer? And he just turned around and pointed to the practice field. <laughs> so he spent his whole summer getting ready for this. That's right. Third down and 10. Here comes Pollock. Goes right by Pinkins, and Pinkins throws it behind Demetrius Summers. Well, what kind of a day has the All-American had? A day worthy of an All-American. Yeah. He's relentless. I mean, he stays, he, he affects plays. He's a difference maker when he's on the field. He gets his hands on the football. He forces bad plays, bad decisions. You know, and his numbers won't be real high in this game as far as tackles, sacks, tackles for loss, but his presence is always felt. And it's fourth down, and Joey Bowers, again, this time he line drives the pooch get, but no one in the vicinity for Georgia, so it will limp to a rest at the 30-yard line. That's a 40-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Five minutes, 59 seconds to go. Twenty-four nothing here. Five fifty-nine to go in the ball game. As South Carolina trails, and DJ Shockley still in at quarterback now for the Georgia Bulldogs. Screen pass, maybe comes to his left, and he'll run. Watch out from behind, but Shockley. Tackled inbounds at the 44-yard line. That's a gain of 14. Jason Capers, number 90, made the tackle. David Green talking with us about DJ Shockley yesterday. He said, we're really, really good friends. He said, he's a good guy. He said, I won't, you know, I won't kid you. I'd rather play all the time. Any quarterback would, Todd. Well, and I think that is the key to this situation. I think it was an issue last year in my mind. As I look on it now, it's a non-issue now. I mean, it's it's not gone away. They're still talking about the two quarterbacks. But the reason it works here is because of those two guys, because of the attitude of D.J. Shockley, and I think in particular David Green, since he's the number one guy. His ability to share the time and to share the snaps and to share his wisdom and his knowledge, uh, I think is a key thing. They respect each other. They cheer for each other, and uh, and it works here. That doesn't mean it would work everywhere else. I still am not in favor of a, of a two-quarterback kind of thing. I think it's good to have your backup ready to play, but it works here because of the, the attitude of those two guys. And Mark Rick said it, uh, it, it wouldn't work unless That's right. these two guys both bought into it. First down and 10. And off. That was Greg Lumpkin on the last carry and this is Greg Lumpkin on this carry but he loses a yard as the clock uh, winds down to 447 to go. Well like, like he was talking to us too uh, yesterday with 
in this age that we live in, in the culture of college football with the internet and the chat rooms and all that, all it would take was for David Green one time to say, you know what, I, this thing stinks. I mean, I should be playing all the time. I mean, I'm the, you know, I was a player of the year, the MVP of the SEC championship game. All he has to do is make one comment like that, and it would be like a wildfire that would be a real difficult problem for this football team. Ronnie Powell in number 20. Gets the carry. It'll be third down and long. 4-12 to go. Well, next up for the Georgia Bulldogs, a very interesting trip to Baton Rouge. We'll have that game for you next weekend on CBS as Mark Richt and the Bulldogs go in to take on Nick Saban and an LSU team that is 2-0 playing Western Illinois today. Georgia with a shutout against Clemson. They allowed 10 late points against Middle Tennessee. And uh, they blanked South Carolina so far today. And I think LSU, and I said this before the season started, when everybody was so high on Auburn, I thought LSU was the team to beat in the West. Shockley, man coverage, a battle for it, knocked down at the goal line. Dante Robinson. Well, that's the young freshman receiver, Sean Bailey, that Mark Richt is very high on. He pointed him out to me today in pregame warm-ups and said, this guy's going to be special. I mean, he just has a... A great natural wiggle to him, running routes, very soft hands. He's a freshman out of Alpharetta, Georgia, 6'1", 170 pounds. And on fourth down and 12, Gordon Ely Kelso comes back on the field. 3.33 to go for the exchange of possession here. and high fair catch call they will let it bounce and it goes out of bounds well placed at the 11 yard line 33 yard punt for Gordon Ely Kelso 322 to go on how we got to 24 nothing Billy Bennett with a field goal to put Georgia up three nothing then Reggie Brown became a real factor in the game that's the first of two touchdowns for Reggie Brown seven catches in all that made it 24 nothing after Michael Cooper went over the top 24 nothing Georgia over South Carolina 322 to go in this one Monday on The Late Show, Dave welcomes actor Colin Farrell. And later this week, don't miss Kate Hudson and Chris Rock. It's The Late Show with David Letterman celebrating 10 great years on CBS. And let's check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game right now. Offense today, 66 plays for South Carolina, an average of 3.6, 63 plays for Georgia, but six yards Per Perry. Get complete game stats at CBSSportsline.com or America Online at our keyword CBS Sportsline. On first down. South Carolina in with their number three quarterback now. I think Bennett Swigert is in the in the game, a red shirt freshman out of Somerville, South Carolina. Famous uh, high school football program in Somerville. Swigert had a couple of carries last week. There's motion on the line, scooting back. Quentin Moses. Swigert pulls up, fires. No. Is there possession? No, there's not. Mikhail Goodman, number 17, the intended receiver. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage on the far side. A little bit behind him, not able to, to pull it in when the contact is made. Offside on the defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Second down five. Swigert got it on a line after the no 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 wasn't caught look at now time now to take a look at the play of the game presented by Wrangler five-star premium Denon and it's a pleasure to welcome back 
Larry Munson of the Georgia Broadcasting Network. Three wide outs and a shotgun. Green going to take it and look and fires right over the middle. Touchdown, Reggie Brown. Threw a bullet right over the middle. Hit him right out there. Third and five. Swigert back. Knocked away on the left side. Late flag coming in. Mike Gilliam was the defender. Looked like he timed it up pretty good. He read the play quickly and saw where Swigert was going with the football, but uh, a little contact before the ball got there. A legend in Georgia. Here's a look. Oh my goodness. Hmm. The hand, the backhand was on the back. And, uh... In his early 80s now, Mr. Munson. <laughs> and has a style unique. Yeah, sure does. In the country. Swigert going deep into double coverage. Demario Minter is back. The catch is made. Matthew Thomas, number 15. Well, Swigert, sometimes as a quarterback, you just got to throw one up and hope your guy can make a play. I mean, it's good coverage. But the receiver just went up higher. In between two defenders, Matthew Thomas came down with the football. And a hurry-up offense now for Swigert. 47-yard reception. Swigert sends Thomas wide to the left. Mikhail Goodman and Savell Newton are the other two receivers on the left side of the field. There's Swigert. Goes left. Nailed. Quentin Moses, second sack of the season. Moses had a big game last week, eight tackles versus Middle Tennessee, had his first sack, and gets another one here. Swigert trying to buy some time, didn't see Moses coming from behind, and again, this, this Georgia defense, they can all run. Hard to run away from them. Loss of eight, second down and 18. Swigert missed all of last year with a knee injury. Originally signed with South Carolina in 2001. Looks for a screen pass. Comes right. Gets good blocking. Sets it up to Demetrius Summers. He slips a tackle, and he is going to be gone. Touchdown, South Carolina, 37 yards. Made a comment earlier about the vision of Demetrius Summers. And he saw where all the defenders were coming when he caught this football. Summers is in the backfield. He's going to slip out on the screen. And it gets set up very well. Nice block out there to lead the play. That was Jonathan Alston, number 72, got the first block. And then Summers knew where the Georgia defenders were and outraced him to the corner. Georgia defensive coaches in the box next to us slamming down their headsets. They right. wanted the shutout. <laughs> 37 yard touchdown and the shutout goes by the wayside so Bennett Swigert adds a little life to the uh, South Carolina attack 52 seconds remaining in this one time call Sunday Touchdown pass from Swigert to Demetrius Summers. 24-7, 52 seconds remaining. Now Bowers will attempt the onside kick. Hands. Here goes Georgia. Sean Bailey, number 12. 18, it's Damian Gary. I beg your pardon. If Damian Gary and uh, Dante Robinson talk on the phone this week, 
he might say something about football because you don't see this very often. An alert play by a veteran player. Damian Gary missed four games last year with acute compartment syndrome, had three surgeries, back for his senior season with a splash. This is Lou Holtz on the right, yeah. lest there be any, any question. And he wants to make sure that he's got good eye contact with this kicker there. You know, on, the, on those onside kicks, what you try to do is you try to kick it into the ground so it bounces high so your guys can run down there and make contact and jump up the ball. That ball never got high off the ground, and Gary scooped it up clean and took off. And he ran right by Dante Robinson, mm. his best friend. Now Billy Bennett. Deep left side, Matthew Thomas. This one... Well, he just places that ball. Doesn't he, he though? He puts it right where he wants it. Here's Thomas loose and tackled from behind out of the 36-yard line. Final 25 seconds, 31 to 7. And as soon as we're complete our uh, com we've completed our task here. Tim and Spencer, the College Football Today postgame show. Well, the one thing for Georgia now, an impressive win. They answered the challenge 31 to 7, but as they get ready to go to Baton Rouge now, big question. Fred Gibson, what's his status going to be? And Ben Watson, the tight end, who's a key part of this offense, left the game with an ankle injury. So two big question marks for Georgia as they go on the road next week for a very important game. That's Kenny Bailey, number 15, and a penalty, a 32-yard pass is complete to Taki Muhammad from Swigert. It's the defense. It's the penalty is declined because the uh, First down. catch was made. Well, Oklahoma leading Fresno State in the fourth. Miami plays tonight. Ohio State had to go to three overtime. Southern Cal. Texas loses to Arkansas. Kansas State. A winner over UMass. And Georgia's going to win this one here. Swigert, Troy Williamson at the 25-yard line. That will be the final play of the ball game. I think they called timeout. I don't know if they're going to say it's over or not. I think Lou said, no, let's, let's go ahead and go home. And that's what's going to happen. David Green, Ronnie Brown collaborate for two touchdowns offensively. And our player of the game, Reggie Brown, seven receptions for the second consecutive week, 104 yards today, and two of those seven receptions touchdowns. football team, the Georgia Bulldogs, and they feed off of their two roommates, those two roommates. David Green sets the tone. He's the calming influence, the leader of the offense, and David Pollock is the heart. I mean, he's the uh, heartbeat of the team and his passion. Now, well, Jill is down uh, on the field with David Pollock. Jill? David Pollock, once again, you win the Out Hustle Award. You told me you wanted to be effective in this game, even if it wasn't an interception in the end zone. How did you get loose, double teamed and all? You know, it's a, it's a total defensive effort. You know, everybody was flying around and making plays, interceptions. Everybody was flying, hitting the quarterback. So, you know, you can't give credit to any one player. Coach Rick standing by here. Congratulations on this win, Coach. You didn't know the personality of this team until they were really tested on the field. What do you think now? Well, I don't know other than these guys play extremely hard, and we played a lot more discipline today. I'm just proud of uh, how everybody played today. We finally scored a touchdown against South Carolina, and the defense was just outstanding. Coach, congratulations. Enjoy the win with your roommate. Back to you guys. All right, Jill, thank you. When we return, we'll be back in New York. Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman. The final here, 31 to 7. Georgia rolls. The Bulldogs are 3-0, and Ugga the sixth is quite happy.
For Todd and Jill, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long. We'll see you again next Saturday. up here in the rim of the Rose Bowl and there are a lot of you out there across the nation watching you never get a real good close-up look at these players we've met them personally and uh, they're really an outstanding group of college youngsters so let's meet some of the standouts of today's game and now let's meet the Wolverines of the University of Michigan and this helmet stands for one of the finest college football programs year after year in America here are the co-captains who led the Wolverines to 10 wins and one loss. Hi, I'm co-captain Jerry Meter. I'm an outside linebacker from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. My major is physical education. Hi, I'm co-captain Russell Davis. I play fullback. I'm from Woodbridge, Virginia. My major is parks and recreation. And now I'd like to introduce my roommate and buddy, Harlan Huckleby. Here, Huck, catch. Thanks, Russ. Hi, I'm Harlan Huckleby, tailback from Detroit, Michigan. My major is labor relations. Michigan always boasts a powerful running game. Here are the men of the offensive line who open the way. I'm Gene Johnson, tight end for Flint, Michigan. My major is education. Hi, Bill Dufag, offensive tackle from East Grand Rapids. My major is physical education. Greg Barnick, offensive right guard, Detroit, Michigan, Ed Major. Hi, I'm Steve Nana, offensive center, hometown's Nardstown, Pennsylvania, bachelor's degree in literature, science, and arts. Hi, I'm John Giesler, I'm offensive tackle from Woodville, Ohio, education major. And there's no way you can hide at all America. Hi, I'm Rick Leach, quarterback from Flint, Michigan. My major is phys ed. And now let me introduce some of my partners from the defense. Michigan's defense is annually up in the top drawer. Quickness, pursuit, gang tackling is their hallmark. Hi, I'm Dale Kites, defensive tackle from Columbus, Ohio. My major is business. My name is Curtis Greer. I play defensive tackle. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. My major is journalism. Hello, my name is Thomas C. Bryan. I play outside linebacker from Detroit, Michigan, and my major is pre-law. Hi, my name is Mark Brayman. I play defensive back. I'm from Midland, Michigan. My major is business and administration. Those seniors will be playing their last game for the Big Ten Champs. Let's meet some of the members of the University of Southern California Trojans, the Pac-10 Conference Champions. The campus of USC, the administration building at USC's famous mascot, Tommy Trojan. And meet some of the standouts of the second best defense against the rush in college football. Hi, my name is Myron Lapka. My uh, position is defensive tackle. My junior year, I'm from Chatsworth, California. My uh, major is public administration. Hi, my name is Rich Dimler. I'm a senior from the University of Southern California. I play defensive nose guard. I was born and raised in Bayonne, New Jersey. My major is speech communication. Hello, my name is Gary Cobb. I'm an outside linebacker. I'm a senior. My hometown is Stanford, Connecticut, and I'm a major in sociology. Hi, my name is Dennis Johnson. I play inside linebacker. I'm a junior. My hometown is Flint, Michigan. Major speech communications. Southern Cal has always been famed for its running game, and here are some of the men up front who make it go. Hello, Kansas City. I'm Brad Buddy. I'm an offensive guard for the Trojans. I'm a junior, and I'm a pre-med major. Hello, my name is Ray Peters. I'm a center. I'm a senior here at USC. I'm from Tahunga, California. I'm a physical education major. Hi, my name is Pat Howell. I'm offensive guard. I'm a senior. My hometown is Fresno, California. And as you know, I'm a dentistry major. Hi there. My name's Otis Page, 6'5", 290. I'm an offensive tackle, but I'll be unemployed after the Rose Bowl. The Trojans throw the ball to talented big play receivers. 
Calvin Sweeney, wide receiver, senior. I'm from Riverside, California, business administration major. Hello, my name is Kevin Williams, wide receiver. Sophomore, hometown, Safinal, California, public administration major. The starting backfield helped the Trojans average 25 points a game this past season and features an All-American in tailback, Charlie White. Hi, I'm Paul McDonald, quarterback, junior at USC. My hometown is Covina, California, and my major is business administration. Hi, my name is Lynn Kane, fullback. I'm a senior, hometown LA, California. Major, speech communications. Hi, my name is Charles White. I'm a tailback for University of Southern California. I'm a junior, my hometown is San Fernando. My major is speech and communication. And that was just some of our, our football team, and hopefully we're gonna go out and try to win this game today. down to the Rose Bowl field. We're waiting for the University of Michigan. They're gathering in the runway. They have about 10 or 12,000 fans here. They'll explode when they come out. They're the co-champs of the Big Ten. Michigan State lost only one game, but Michigan State was ineligible in postseason play. Kurt, when you look at Michigan, you get the feeling that uh, they're ready. There's not a lot of mis-emotion. I've seen teams jump up and down. I'm not sure all that fanfare helps. They just look ready to me. 